I'd like to tell a story that comes from my father's days in the Royal Air Force during the Second World War. Uh, he was uh, a pilot uh, flying Lancasters. Although he never dropped bombs, he was trained to do it and ended up thankfully dropping supplies to the Burmese behind enemy lines, flying over the hump, as they called it, in China. But uh, there was a young man in their local fellowship that belonged to a, a very elite group of pilots known as the Pathfinders. Uh, their motto in the Air Force was, we guide to strike. And their responsibility was to come in low in smaller planes and locate the factories and so on, the bombing sites that the British were trying to neutralize. And they would be surrounded by ack ack and anti-aircraft fire and bombs dropping. And they were kind of famous for having antifreeze in their veins, so to speak. They're very calm under pressure, a little to the left, a little to the right, good shot, sort of a thing, as if they were involved in some sport. But this young man was shot down over Germany and went into hiding, uh, hiding during the day and then traveling at night. And a couple of days into his escapades, seeking to make it back to Allied forces, he had stepped out onto the road just at a moment when a staff car came rolling around the corner and he was caught in the headlights. There was no place to go. And uh, so he made as if he wanted a ride and the staff car stopped and he got into the front seat beside the driver. Well, as a boy, he had learned two verses from the Bible in German. And these two verses were from Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. And they say, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. In these two verses, we have the four chief names of God. And we see the psalmist was greatly encouraged by the fact that the covenant-keeping God is the almighty God. He is our refuge and our fortress. He is the Lord. He is Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. He is El Elyon, the Supreme One. And David was greatly encouraged by this. And as they rode along in the car, the driver began to talk to this young pilot who didn't know any German at all, except these two verses. And so, crying out to God for mercy, he quoted these two verses. And somehow, as this driver heard these words, he didn't recognize them as scripture, but he recognized that perhaps this man was involved in some secret operation for the Fuhrer. And uh, he took from these words that this was a young man who should be looked after. And so without any further conversation, he drove him to the next town and released him there. And eventually this young man was able to make it safely home. And what um, richness he must have seen in these verses. David himself, who often had to escape, found in this glorious truth, wherever we are, no matter how many enemies come against us, we have a secret place. We have a dwelling place. And of course, more than likely, David was thinking about the Holy of Holies, the sanctuary, the dwelling place of God, that place that physically the high priest could only enter once, one time a year, and only the high priest. But David knew the secret of spiritually entering into the sanctuary into the secret place of the Most High. And there he says, we abide under the shadow of the Almighty, as if the Shekinah glory is over our head, protecting us and looking after us, so that we say, the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. In days of difficulty and discouragement, in uncertainty, when things are shaking around us, 
What a great hope, what a great certainty this is to know that if God is for us, who can be against us?